In the last week lecture session, we had discussed about the second part of Chapter 4, Diode. On last Monday we did discuss about the several type of diodes and its application. For this session, we will discuss about the load line analysis and later about the serial and parallel diode circuits. Interestingly, for today's lecture there will be more numbers and mathematic problem compared to the previous parts of the lecture. Hopefully, all the students listen and watch this video carefully as to understand the flow of my explanation. As usual in our previous lecture session, there will be several parts of this lecture video where the students require to answer several quiz questions based on this lecture video and also as for the attendance. Ok right let's begin the lecture. Firstly, as usual, I will list down the learning outcome here for the chapter 4. For today, there are two outcomes to be covered and achieved at the end of the lecture session by all of the students. Today all of the students are expected to solve the load line analysis. At the same time, the ability of solving the equivalent circuit serial with the parallel will be our priority for today's outcome. The rest too will be on the coming lecture session. In this part 3 of chapter 4, we will discuss about load line analysis. Here. I will explain about the load line with the characteristic of devices in an analysis way. Later, the concept of comparing the equivalent circuit which are serial and parallel will be embedded here. Several examples hopefully will be helpful for gaining the idea to solve various problem related to diode. Before we begin our journey today, I would like to ask you about a simple circuit analysis. Do you still remember about Ohm's law? What had Ohm said in the law? V equals I multiply by R. Right? There we have a graph which describes this law as AI versus V graph. R will be slope. In Ohm, I and V are analyzed using a line as what we call applied load to a specific circuit or we can call it network. Then, last week, we learned about I and V curve, right? This curve is also called characteristic of device or here is diode. Line and curve. So today we will have it both in one analysis which we will call it as load line analysis. In load line analysis, the intersection of the line and the curve is determined as point of operation. Usually called quiescent point or Q point. Q point. Here just as a kind of flashback with what we have learned before. Y equal mx and c. M here is the slope of the y versus x graph. Similar in a simple circuit which v equal to i and r. Changing the way of this Ohm's law to be i equal to 1 over r multiply with v. Looks similar right in both cases. For finding the intersect point for both axes, we need to make one of those to be as zero. This concept will be the same as in the load line analysis. However, in load line analysis, apart from finding this intersect point, 
we also need to find the place where the load line intersect with the characteristic of device. The intersect point here are IDQ and VDQ or we can call them as Q point. OK now, we will use a simple network, or a circuit which is a load in figure 3. We have source as E, VD as the diode and R as the resistor. In last slide we talked about two types of intersection. With the both axis and between line and curve. Here, first, we will see the intersection at the both ID and VD axis. Intersections can easily be determined by employing anywhere on vertical axis VD is 0 volt and anywhere on horizontal axis ID is 0. For vertical axis, set the VD to 0 volt. Apply the KVL for the circuit. We will have E is equal to VD plus IDR. Finally, we can obtain the point at vertical axis as ID equal to E by R. For horizontal axis, set the ID to 0 ampere. Still applying the same KVL for the circuit as in figure 3. We will have E is equal to VD plus IDR. Finally, Substituting the zero current will result the VD equal to E. Now we will take a look at example number one. For the series diode configuration in figure four and the characteristics in figure five, determine the VDQ, IDQ and VR. As we have a silicon diode in figure four, we understand that VK is approximately 0.8 volt. To find the intersect for both axes, we call apply ID equal to E by R and VD equal to E as discussed before. We have 20 milliampere and 10 volts. From these two points which are IDQ and VDQ, we will pull a line into figure 5. After pulling the line for the load, we can have the graph as in figure 6. The interception of the line and curve happened at IDQ is 18.5 mA and VDQ is 0.78 volts. So now we have the value of IDQ and VDQ. Don't forget the third value which been asked by the question above. KVL described VR is E minus VDQ. Then we will have VR as 9.22 volts. In this part, the approximate semiconductor diode model is used for the analysis. Here. We can make an approximation of a silicon as example, 0.7 volts to be as power source with 0.7 volts with ID from positive to negative and so on. Diode has two general type of bias. Firstly, is the forward bias diode. In forward bias diode, we can substitute the equivalent model for the on-state diode. The VD here is equal to the knee voltage or VK. As example silicon is 0.7 volts. From the left hand side figure 8, as the forward bias in been applied in the circuit, we can redraw the left one to the right hand side of figure 8. Apply the KVL, VR is E minus VK. As in serial circuit, ID and IR would be the same value. 
so, the ID is equal to VR by R. Secondly, is the reverse bias diode. In reverse bias diode, we can substitute the equivalent model for the off-state diode. Here we can see the diode's cathode has be attached positive polarity of the source, this reflect to us as reverse bias diode. The ID here becomes zero ampere. Finally, the VD value is equal to E's. OK right. In example 2, for the series diode configuration in figure 10, determine VD, VR, and ID. As the E is greater than silicon 0.7 volt, the VD became 0.7 volts. VR is the subtraction of E with VD, and VR is 7.3 volts. As in serial circuit, current value will be the same. IR equal to VR by R and will make the IR as 3.32 mA. Source notation is quite important when we are dealing the equivalent circuit for diode. Careful with the signage of the E. The bottom part is considered as the ground. Example 3, for the series diode configuration in figure 12, determine VD, VR, and ID. Refer to approximate model for the silicon, as the power source in 0.5 volts the VD is 0. Figure 13 shows when VD is 0.5 V the current ID is 0. This is due to insufficient applied voltage. The bias voltage must be greater than the barrier potential. Therefore, as ID is equal to IR in this case, VR is 0 volt. For the VD finally is equal to E as 0.5 volts. Example 4. Determine VO and ID for the series circuit in figure 14. VO is parallel with VR, then we can find the VO by E minus both diode silicon is 0.7 volts and red lead is 0.8 volts and will get 9.5 volts. For ID, as it is equal to IR, VR divide R and will be 13.97 mA. Example 5 Determine ID, VD2 and VO for the series circuit in figure 15. The combination of a short circuit in series with an open circuit always results in an open circuit and ID equal to 0 ampere. VO also became 0 volt. As an open circuit, VD2 will have the equivalent voltage as 20 volts. Exercise 6 Determine I, V1, V2 and V0 for the series DC configuration in figure 16. I can be analyzed by applying the KCL in left bottom figure. I will be 2.07 mA. Having this I, we can solve the V1 and V2. Then, apply the KVL for finding the value for VO. VO is equal to minus 0.45 volts. For example, 7, we need to determine VO. I1, ID1 and ID2 for the parallel diode configuration in figure 17. 
As the VO is parallel with the D2, VO is similar to Ni voltage of D2 which is 0.7 volts. Since D1S voltage is same with D1, I here can be solved. I1 is equal to 28.18 mA. Example 7 shows the parallel behavior in ID1 and ID2 which gained current from I1 equally divided into 2 as 14.09 mA. Example 8 Determine the currents I1, I2, and ID2 for the network in figure 18. Here VR1 is similar to VD2 as they are parallel. I1 is VR1 by 3.3 kOhms then will be 0.212 mA. VR2 is analyzed by considering the loop on the left hand side involved E, D1, D2 and R2. VR2 then is 18.6 volts. After getting the VR2 value, IR2 can be obtained. I2 equals to 3.32 mA. For ID2, we need to subtract I1 from I2 and we'll get 3.11 mA. With that, I end my lecture for this chapter 4 part 3 about the load line analysis. I hope that you all gained knowledge and ideas this chapter. If you have any question, please contact me at nixariffi at utem.edu.my. I will see you on the next lecture session. Thank you and assalamu alaikum all. Okay, thank you guys for watching NMZ Hash channel. Hopefully you can get um, knowledge and benefit from the videos. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.